Hi, so this is another comfy video. This time the subject is set area conditioning, which is uh, doing prompts for uh, different areas of your image. And most people want to uh, use this to do, you know, put a cat on a table or a frog in a bowl or whatever. I never think it works very well. Where it does work well is to make one side of an image or a section of the image run on a slightly different prompt to another area. So the nodes, the, this is the basic setup. Anyone who's watched my videos before know I, I like to put a rough guide image in. It's just a noise image and it, it roughly defines the horizon. I don't want the horizon slap bang in the middle. Generative AI tends to put the horizon slap bang in the middle, which I don't like. It also tends to put your, your main subject slap bang in the middle as well, which another of which I like. And it also dis defines where the, um, where the sun is or where the light is coming from. So here we have a completely standard image to image, nothing special about it at all. Uh, we've got a landscape image, so where uh, the proportion, the proportions as you see are um, 1536 by 768 high, so not a very big image. So what we're interested in happens here. And the first section we're going to do is these are the nodes you'll be using. Set area with percentage. You can do set area if you just want to chop a bit out, and you can do that with this. But you'll see this this has problems when you come to rescale. So when you come to rescale, you'll have to change all these numbers, which you can do. It's fine. It works fine that way. But I find using percentage is a lot easier. And then the same settings will run across when we do our upscales to to refine the image. So if you're not going to do that, then the set area is is absolutely fine. So um. I found these are the most flexible, should I say. Uh, so this one, it, it covers half the image and it goes from the left of the image. So this one essentially does the left half of the image. That one does the right half of the image. That's a better way of explaining it. And then they're mixed together with a conditioning combine, which combines the two. And you would think that would be it, but it isn't. So I've done a render where I, you see I've taken the conditioning from here just after the two have been joined and they've been joined at different strengths. So the right hand side is stronger than the left hand side. And that's something you can play with. I want the right hand side dominant in this particular case. So uh, you'll be able to see the difference when we go down. So this is going straight in after these two prompts here. And we go to the prompts. Uh, one is a derelict city. The other one is a Baroque and magnificent city. So rich people, poor people. <laughs> it's my... Nice, my simple theme here. So we go to what comes out, and this is what comes out. And uh, I, I think you, you probably spotted this isn't exactly what I want. We've we've got our our, our, our dereliction over here, and we've got our posturus over here, and we've got rather a sudden join between the two. So there has to be some method of making this all one place, and that method is quite simple, really. We make another prompt which only covers what's there in general. So there's the Laura prompted there. But other than that, I'm not mentioning any of the dereliction or the poshness or the style in this one. I'm just doing a general across the image prompt. And this will be applied across the whole image. So we do that. And then, so we join the two together here with another conditioning combine. So you see the, the all across, this, is, this covers the whole image on conditioning two. And these are the two sections on conditioning one. And we'll drop those into the positive here to see what they do. To see if it's a bit better than a half by half. Okay, so I'll cue that. So here we are, that's back. And <clears throat> as you see, it's worked pretty well. We've got our poshness over here and our not so poshness over the left. And we nicely segue between the two. All is well. And if you, if you just want to make an image um, a small image then you're done really that's uh, that's uh, set area conditioning done and of course you don't have to have just uh, one area you could do uh, you could do middle left and right uh, it's just a matter of adding another group of these but we're going to cover that later when we try and make a really wide image uh, in the second half of the video the problems occur when we want to upscale so here i'm going to upscale by twice i'm going to turn that down to one just to produce the image quickly and we'll show you what it does with two but essentially if you test it with one you won't be waking it waiting around 
because there is a slight problem that occurs when you just take this conditioning here that worked well, pop it into the positive. So we're now running on exactly the same conditioning that produced this image. But this image is now the input, as you see here. The image is going in there. So you're doing an image to image on this. And uh, I'll just cue that so you can see what happens. So that's that back. The result's not too bad. However, we've rather lost the distinction from one side to the other. You see, this has all become considerably nicer. And this has perhaps even become a little bit more ordinary. If we go back to the other one. So you see these houses are, are quite posh and they're quite derelict. And these houses have come up marketed. So we've sort of rather lost the point of our image slightly. It's not a bad image, it's fine. On a lot of seeds, it'll actually take away the Baroque and put in a, a simpler cathedral over here. On quite a few seeds, it will do that. So the reason this is happening is that we've got two overall influences. We've got the overall influence of our image to image going in at um, 45D noise, I vaguely recall, yeah, 45. And we've also got the full influence of, of this as well. So we've got two average across the whole image influences, which is watering down our area conditionings. So the solution to this is quite simple. There's a couple of solutions. I've put them both here. You can set the conditioning area strength, which works fine, but I, 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 it's not as controllable. I'll zoom in so you can see both those. It's not as controllable as setting the time step range. So what I do here is at first it does it just on these first on these two on these two prompts and it only brings this join up prompt in uh, halfway through the generation so you see i'm doing 10 steps so it's coming in on step six through to step 10. so we'll run that and see the difference so here's that back and uh, as you see we've got um, a bit more dereliction over here the first one came out a bit too similar, so I actually had to change the step a bit so it starts a little later at uh, step seven. And I had to dial up the dereliction a bit. So you see the dereliction was 0.75 before. So I had to dial up the dereliction to 1.2. So, and, and you will get setbacks. You'll, you'll do this and you won't get any change. But because you can dial up the strength of these against each other, and the moment in which the uh, glue, I like to call this the glue, cuts in, you have quite good control ha uh, over how it manifests in the image. Now we do have a slight feeling of join here. See that cloud ends just on there? Uh, I would just clone that out in Photoshop to be honest. Same as this, I clone that building just across to there and, um, uh, and that would take away the accent of that join. Most, if you didn't know it was there, you wouldn't worry about it. But as you see, we've got quite nice derelict stuff over here and our posh stuff has retained its grandeur over there. And the next bit I should do is um, show the actual refine itself, uh, which it will just be an upscale of this essentially, but it, it'll change slightly because when you upscale, you get a different result. So you, you might think, oh, I love this. I just want it bigger, but uh, it doesn't always quite work that way. Okay, so we'll do that next. Right. So that's back, and here we are, and we've got a pretty good image. So you look, things here. Um, so we've got almost no sign of a drawing along the here. Slight hint in there, uh, but that's about it. Don't like that much. But we've got a pretty coherent image, and we change from uh, rural and rundown through to rich and uh, luxurious on the right hand side. So. Uh, our prompt has been pretty well reflected there. So I'll put a, uh, the next section is we'll do with a slightly more, uh, a slightly larger uh, version. I, I, I suspect this um, little drawing here could be got rid of by um, bringing this in uh, one step earlier. But uh, it, it's already fine and I would probably not bother to regenerate, I would just retouch. Okay, so on to the next part, which is uh, making a really wide screen image using the same methods. Okay, so here we are in a more complex implementation of exactly the same thing. And it's just to point out other problems that occur uh, when you try and make a wider image because the, the doing it in two bits and then uh, overlaying uh, this one here. See, this is the same one. This is the, my glue 
text there doesn't work. It, it run, you run into problems with it basically on a very wide image because it, 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 you just, well, for a start, it, it, you know, it makes all the generations very long because I'm, I'm going to make a sort of 7,000 image pixels across, so it'll be quite wide. So the image that's going in, I just, I think the first, best thing to do will be, this looks very complex, but it, it, it's not quite as complex as it appears to me. These are exactly the same, except there's two groups of them. So we're doing it in quarters. So you see 25, 25, 25, 25, all of the strengths are even, although I could, you know, you do always have that option. And the prompts here, as you see, they go from the left of the image to the right of the image. So we've got a futuristic city, palm trees, morning light, etc. These are the Lauras here. And then we have the same thing again, but slightly different. Here we have a retro futuristic city. We have afternoon light and we have reflections. So it's just a little bit different. Then on the third one, we have a subject, we have a person. So she is described here and the city is, is, is described as well, but in not as, in as much a detail as it will be later on. And then we have another subject. So I'm making life really hard for myself. So we have Sports Guard, Bugatti Streamlined and a few indications of, of the background, but not as much. And we have, uh, this is the Laura for the car. So there's a fancy Laura in there. And our glue, so we have four prompts, each stepping across a quarter. So there's, and then our glue is just about the content. So it's just city trees, sky, morning light, road, road will assume. And, and the Lauras are in there as well. So the way this is all joined up is two are combined, the other two are combined, and then the combines are combined. <laughs> Just to make life really complicated, but it's quite simple, really. You, you join two together, then you join, then you join this one to these two, and then you join this one to these three, and and you end up with uh, a single conditioning which comes out the other end, and will go from here. I'll just do it into there, and that is what produces uh, this first image here. We'll just zoom in to see, show you what we what we get. So we have our racy car. We have our subject and we have the rest of the city and the road on the other side. As you see, you get quite a coherent image that runs all the way across. The problems arise again, as they did before. The problems arise when you want to refine the image. And we deal with that here. So when we refine the image, what we do, let's say this to never so we can see. We crop the area we want to deal with out of this picture, like so. So you see I'm cropping the right hand half of this picture. So it's just got our subjects, the car and the girl. And I want to refine that to upscale it using just these two prompts. So these two prompts, I've got a reroute over to here. These are just the prompt. And I do actually a simpler process. I join them together in the same way we did in the first video, exactly the same way. We've combined these two, which have the areas set each for half of the image. So this, the images are set each for half. And so it'll do a refine just on that piece. And I'll show you the result of that here. So that's the result. That's the resulting uh, render, which as you see is, is it, it's kept at all of the uh, details and is quite nice and crispy. She will get a further refine, which I'll show you now. But that's done in the standard way of doing it. I do a refine where I just cut her out and only refine her and her face. So I put that all together in Photoshop. So that render will upscale. You see my imagery size and upscale there. When I want to do the middle, which is these two, I set the cropping to do halfway across the image at 768. And there we have the middle section. And if I put this uh, to zero here, I will have the left hand section. So I'll just show you that. Set that to zero. We get the left hand section. So I'll get a refined image for each of those sections. So if I just quickly show you those, I'm not going to run them all for through separately because uh, I'm, I'm sure you can pretty much see what's going on there. So these are the other two. Let's put them all together. So that's the right hand section, the middle section and the left hand section. And then I put them together in Photoshop. And I do refer the refinements on her. And I also do uh, a few refinements on uh, 
on details within. I might, uh, let's have a look at a good one here. So that's that's our car. Is there an event? That's a car from the first render, which isn't so great. And this is one car from the Refine, and I think I used this one oh, for the Refine. There you go, because it's pointed the right way. And these I uh, composite in, in Photoshop, which I've shown in other videos. So if you look at some other videos I do, you'll see how to composite all together. So essentially here, I have my full kit for making up the image. I have the right hand side, the car, finished car. I have the center with a few refinements to be done on the cars here. And I have the left hand side, which has the same thing. It needs a few refinements in cars and, and whatever, just to, just to make the whole lot work. And this results in the final image, which is here. We'll just zoom in and scan across here. So that's one way of making a very wide image. Okay, I hope that was useful. I shall put both workflows in the description below and feel free to ask any questions as it's it's quite a complex one. It's not um, it's not a beginner's uh, video this anyway. This is I'm assuming you have a pretty good grasp of certainly of Photoshop and of Comfy. Okay, thank you very much and I hope that was interesting and helpful.